Hello, hi. Till now we have completed the discussions about the important life cycles of green alga starting from world box till spirogera. Then we have seen the only genus which we have to study from yellow green algae that is Bauchiria. And today we are going to start with Ectocarpus. After this we will be seeing Fucus and Laminaria with that the entire algal life cycles will be coming to an end. So let us start with Ectocarpus. Ectocarpus is a macroscopic that means which we can see with our naked eye and marine algae okay it is majorly seen in marine ecosystem though there are some freshwater species also available okay and coming to its occurrence these particular marine brown algae are distributed worldwide okay and they can be predominantly seen in the atlantic coast okay they are either free floating or they can be found lithophytic that means attached to the rock substratum now there are three different types of uh, like habitat it is found to occur one is that it is an epiphytic alga okay it can be seen on growing on the surface of some other alga okay what are the other kind of alga on the surface of which it could be seen for example laminaria on surface of laminaria we can see ectocarpus so it is epiphytic then it can be set as uh, endophytic it can be seen within the cells of some other algal species or uh, plant species then it can be said to be an epizoic till now other algae we have seen as epiphytic some algae we have seen as epiphytic but now i am introducing a term called epizoic that means it can be seen on the surface of certain fishes okay uh, for example ectocarpus fasciculatus grows as epizoic on the fins of certain species certain fishes then it can be uh, already I have said uh, that it is it can be epiphytic epiphytic uh, for that we have to write example of ectocarpus coniferous it grows on the surface of larger algae like laminaria okay so these kind of examples we have to quote and worldwide more than 100 species are reported of which around 16 species are found in India okay I have given the description here okay it is a brown alga why it is a brown alga? It is having a pigment called fucoxanthin. Okay. Though it is having chlorophyll A and C, but the green color is masked by the dominance of pigment fucoxanthin, which gives it a golden brown color. And uh, coming to the number of species, more than 100 species are reported worldwide, of which around 16 species are found in India, and it is mainly distributed in the western coast of India. For example, Ectocarpus indicus, Ectocarpus coniferus, etc. This Ectocarpus coniferus is actually predominantly lithophytic, attached to the rocky substratum. Uh, yeah. Now coming to the uh, reproductive structures. Okay, you can see that there are two kinds of sporangia which are present on the Ectocarpus brown alga. You can see this, this elongated sporangia is known as plurilocular sporangia and this globular shaped sporangia which are called unilocular sporangia both are involved with uh, the asexual reproduction we will see that during the reproductive uh, cycle discussion now if you are coming to the cells of this particular ectocarpus you can see that this cell is almost rectangular and cylindrical okay and you can see this kind of branched structures which are present on the cytoplasm these are not chloroplast strands because this is a brown alga and because of that due to the presence of other pigments like scandophyll, scalotinoids and others it's not the chlorophyll but other colors these brown colored pigments are predominant and it is called chromatophores okay it's called these strands are called chromatophores and on these strands we can see some dark shaped structures you can uh, are you seeing this this black dots on the strands these are called uh, pyranoids we have seen py pyranoids attached with chloroplast strands in other algal species like uh, spirogera etc here also pyranoids are serving the same function okay same function of storage of preserved food material but since this is a uh, the, like brown alga the reserved food material is not starved but what laminarin and manitol okay that i have written in the notes in the upcoming slides that you can refer now we are going to see we are going to see that it is having a 
two type of branching system dimorphic branches are dimorphic one is the projecting erect filaments and the lower one is the prostrate system which are the rhizoids okay now coming to the structure you can see that this is the, the thallus is filamentous okay the filaments are arranged end to end end to end end to end and it is actually highly branched okay it is highly branched do you see any resemblance with any other alga that we have seen do you remember uh, carrot it is also it was also branched okay it was also branched but it was unlike this there was knots and inner knots and from with the knots uh, you can see the walls present in uh, the thallus structure of Kara, but this is not like that but it is also branched and uh, just like the uh, like uh, appendages like globule and nucule in Kara, you can see some appendages called sporangia protilocular and unilocular sporangia in uh, ectocarpus thallae as well now each cell is uninucleate okay or single nucleus you can see and it is having a cell wall which is double layered so what is the uh, importance of the double layer cell wall these cells are having an outer layer of gelatinous wall okay outer layer of gelatinous wall which is composed of algin and fucoidin okay the outer gelatinous cell wall is made up of algin and fucoidin and inner layer obviously composed of cellulose okay and when you have when you are describing uh, the particular cell you have to comment about uh, the particular branch and body is called uh, chromatophore which are present this trans chromatophores which are present on the cytoplasm then about pyranoid you have to write a single nucleus you have to write so this fucosanthin which is present in the particular uh, cell gives it a color of golden brown now uh, coming to the uh, protoplasm we have already uh, discussed that it is having pyranoid Pyranoids are present in the plastids or chroma, chromatophores. Actually, this chromatophore is a uh, modification of the chloroplast. Okay, instead of having the chlorophyll, it is having the fucosanthin and fucosanthin and other pigments. And just like in the chloroplast strands, we see strands of chromatophores. Within that, we see pyranoids. These pyranoids show reserve food material called laminatin and mantol. So you can see that this uh, this uh, chromatophores are ribbon-like strands. So these kind of things you can write. Then coming to the photosynthetic pigments, okay, we can uh, you can write it down that the photosynthetic pigments are chlorophyll A and C, not chlorophyll A and B. Chlorophyll uh, A B was associated with the green pigment, but it is absent here. We have uh, the characteristic chlorophyll A and C plus the accessory pigments like beta carotene and uh, fucoxanthin. It is a xanthophyll pigment. Fucoxanthin dominates and it is giving the golden brown color for uh, this particular algae okay you can see this okay it's, it's almost a, a golden brown color okay this is the thing golden brown color you can see this now coming to the branching system we know that there are two kinds of branches one is the prostrate uh, one is the prostrate branch which you can see uh, it is the rhizoid which is represented representing the prostrate branch and then there is erect branch when you are drawing you have to draw more branches okay this figure is incomplete because it is uh, the uh, branching is not shown here okay that you have to show now the branches uh, this is a sporophytic plant body actually uh, there are two kinds of uh, plant body for this particular uh, ectocarpus species one is that one is the thallus which is bearing the uh, gametes okay that means gametangium okay male gametangium and female gametangium both are there they will be releasing the spores i mean uh, the male gametes the male gametes will be fusing to form zygote and from the zygote you can see in the zygote from the zygote you can see the sporophytic generation this is a sporophytic generation if you are seeing uh, this particular uh, like sporangia like plurilocular sporangia and unilocular sporangia then it is called a this is the unilocular sporangia and uh, like this is the plurilocular sporangia if you are seeing such uh, structures that is the sporophytic plant body and there are gam like gamete bearing or gamete gametangium bearing plant body that is called uh, the gametophyte so one kind of generation shows gametophyte then another kind of generation shows this kind of sporophyte so this particular uh, uh, like uh, thallus structure will be 
having either having gamet gametangium bearing uh, thallus or a different plant will be having like this a sporangium bearing structure so the gametangium bearing thallus or uh, filamentous thallus called gamet uh, ga gam gametophyte and the sporangium bearing thallus or filamentous structure called sporophyte so two kinds of plants we can see so but the only difference is that both will be looking both will be looking very similar only difference is that one kind of structures will be bearing this sporangium and the gametophyte structure will be bearing the gametangium after like uh, after this kind of difference everything will be similar so both kind of thallus structures are similar so it is showing an isomorphic alternation of generation from uh, gametophyte to sporophyte so this point you have to use this is uh, the perfect example for isomorphic alteration of generation uh, so that is it then uh, coming to the cell structure how it is growing okay we have already discussed that the prostrate system is uh, represented by the rhizoids you can see rhizoids are also multicellular cells are arranged end to end and then there is multicellular uh, erect system which is uh, showing the uh, growth uh, to the uh, to the top okay so what is the uh, mechanism of growth in this kind of bodies that we are going to see now wait uh, there was one figure yeah this one you can see that this is the prostate system this prostate system how it is elongating it is through the apical division the cells at the apex will be dividing multiple times and it will be elongating like this but in the case of an all apex okay here one apex here one apex here one apex all the apical cells divide and it will elongate the prostate system but in the case of uh, this particular erect system we are seeing a particular growth called trico trichothallic growth okay trichothallic growth okay so this or tricholic growth this particular trichothallic or tricholic growth how it is uh, manifested is that at the base of the filament okay filamentous thallus this is a particular filament of the particular ectocarpus uh, thalli and this particular filament at the base of it one or two cells that will be the meristematic cells okay this meristematic cell this, consider this is the meristematic cell it will be growing upwards or it will be dividing towards the top and towards the bottom and this will be elongating at the base uh, is the area where, from where the meristematic cells elongate and this particular filament will be growing like this so this is the uh, trichothallic uh, meristem and it is showing uh, this trichotic growth uh, towards the top and this particular uh, meristematic cells is responsible for the elongation so this is about uh, this particular uh, thallus structure and one more thing what you have to uh, remember is that this particular cells will be having small small vacuoles actually that vacuole is not uh, represented in this figure but you have to draw small small uh, spherical vacuoles as well these vacuoles are filled with uh, polyphenols okay polyphenols is serving as, uh, as the purpose for some chemical digestion and for that reason we call this particular small vacuoles as doing the functions of lysosomes we know that lysosomes are suicidal bags which are responsible for digestion of things and uh, this particular small vacuoles which are filled with the polyphenols uh, that are also displaying the function of lysosome so this is the thing and uh, one thing you have to remember that we will discuss during the time of reproduction it is showing isomorphic alteration of generation we can see that there are gamete bearing thallus and spores bearing thallus but uh, though in this figure these are represented in a different way if we zoom in you will see that the sporophyte is also a filamentous body like this see this filamentous body is like this so both are looking similar so isomorphic alteration of gener alternation of generation we will be seeing then we will discuss the asexual and sexual reproduction in a uh, different lecture so i think almost all other points we have discussed and one more thing it is showing a haplodiploidic life cycle because one particular uh, like thallus uh, is showing haploid structure thus this particular gamete will be having haploid structure it will be having n and the sporophyte will be having diploid structure it will be having uh, plurilocular sporangium etc which are ha having diploid condition so uh, the gamete and gamete, gamete bearing structure or gamete bearing filaments are haploid and spore bearing filaments are deployed so it is showing a haplodiploidic life cycle so when you are writing or drawing the alternation of i mean uh, the ranges of life cycle you can mention this is the example for haplodiploidic uh, life cycle so this is all about the uh, general account and thallus structure in uh, ectocarpus we will see the reproduction in the upcoming slides thank you